Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today we are out here at a log pile because we finally got our DeWalt 60 volt 20 inch battery chainsaw. Yes, I said 20 inch battery chainsaw. This saw is actually supposed to have twice the torque that a 50cc gas chainsaw is supposed to have. So I don't know what that means in horsepower, but they're saying that it has double the torque of a 50cc gas chainsaw, which is a pretty big statement. I mean, that's, that's a pretty powerful chainsaw. So as soon as I started seeing their allegations and, and that this new saw was coming out and that they were gonna have this 20 inch saw, you know, I, I thought, you know what? I've gotta have that. I've gotta have it for the channel. Gotta have it for myself because, you know, I, it seems like that I go to that 20 inch saw very regularly. Let's run through this. I'll show you what we've got. And I'll kind of give you my first thoughts and impressions about this. This is not a full review because I don't even have the battery completely charged up. I'm actually getting ready to leave on vacation and I wanted to get this video made before we left. So I only had a short time to charge the battery and it is showing three quarters of the way or uh, two thirds of the way charged. One of the first things that I did notice whenever I picked this up is that it, it's heavy. But when I picked it up, it still had like the shipping box and everything on it but it came basically the shipping box wrapped around this plastic case, the 28 pounds, 14.3 ounces. And that does not have the charger inside the case. So that's just the saw and the battery and it doesn't have bar oil in it also. But as you can see, we're pushing almost 29 pounds for the case, the saw and the battery. One thing I will say too, this is much bigger than most of the chainsaws that I have that are battery, like the, the Milwaukee, I've got an Echo uh, DCS 5000. Those saws, the body and everything is just a lot smaller than this. This thing has a very large handle and stuff on it. One thing that's very noticeable about it is all the grips on this is rubberized. You know, so everything actually has a real nice um, grippy feeling to it. And there's no plastic feeling to any of the handles. Like everything is that rubberized filling grip. So now we've got the saw and the battery. I went ahead and filled up the bar oil and it is 17 pounds, 4.5 ounces. So 17, 17 and a quarter pounds. And as you can see, that is not a light chainsaw. So one of the first things on here that I can already say that I'm not real happy about this, but the, the chain has got one of those low profile chains on it. I've also seen it's in not. some places where this, this chain actually can be hard to find a replacement for. Uh, they do send a file with it to be able to sharpen the chain. But one thing I do like to see are these big metal bucking spikes. They're both on both sides, and those are nice heavy-duty spikes. You don't have to worry about getting into your saw and wearing the plastic or, you know, burn that up. You've actually got these big metal spikes. It's probably the biggest on a battery saw that I've seen. The tool that comes with this for the nuts and stuff here, it's actually a little short tool. And I was actually sitting there a few minutes ago trying to break those nuts loose with it and could not get them loose. It is really handy because the tool actually stores right here in the handle. But as you can see, it's super short. And from the factory, they had these things torqued down so tight that I couldn't break that loose with this little short tool. And I actually had to bring this one out here to be able to break the nuts loose. The other thing I'm not crazy about, as you can see, I'm trying to figure out a way to hold on to the nuts. And I wish they would have done captured nuts on this because this is an expensive saw. And it would have been so much better if they could have just took that little extra mile and made these a captured nut. It's got metal inserts here, makes a good solid connection where you can tighten them down in order to keep the bar nice and secure. The chain adjustment on this is this big knob right here on the bottom. And this thing is a lot beefier and bigger than what I've really seen on about any of the saws. And it's just kind of typical adjustment. You turn it left for loose and right for tight. Everything else inside here is pretty much standard. Uh, you see it's got your metal studs here. Your chain adjustment sticks through the bar right here. Actually, let's take a look, see at the oiler and see how that actually works loosen that up just a little bit yeah so there's just a little tiny hole right here for the oiler so now that i've got the bar off we can see our actual chain size on here it is a 3 8 low profile 68 drive lengths 
and it is a 50 thousandths chain, so I am glad to see that instead of that little 43 thousandths. This cover on here is actually pretty beefy feeling. It's, it's pretty stiff plastic. It's not a real thin, uh, flimsy stuff at all. So, and it's easy to line up. You just line up your stud holes and your uh, chain adjustment, and it slips right back on there. The main thing is just keeping up with the nuts and not losing them. And then our wrench slips right back into the handle and locks into place. So this particular setup that I got, this one actually comes with the 15 amp hour battery. And I believe the way this is actually works, it's 15 amp hour if you run it as 20 volts, but it's only a five amp hour if you run it as 60 volts, which is what this chainsaw is. But it'll be interesting to see how long the five amp hour actually lasts in this saw with all their power claims. It's got a regular chain brake, just like pretty much any other saw, whether it's gas or battery. Uh, you push it forward to lock it, that keeps you from starting it, pull it towards you, and that unlocks everything. And then you also have the thumb safety right here. You have to push it down and then pull the trigger. So one thing I'm not crazy about with right there also is the fact that it is not a variable speed trigger. It is either on or off. So I would have thought that with the saw in this price range, actually, that this would have been variable speed and, you know, you would have a lot of control with that trigger. So enough talking about this thing. Let's put it into a couple logs and see how it does. Uh, like I say, the battery is actually two thirds charged. So I'm going to try it out for a few minutes and uh, kind of give you my first initial impressions on this and uh, let you know what I think about it. So I will say first impressions, I can put a lot of pressure on that saw without it stalling out, but it seems like that the speed of it is fairly slow on the chain compared to some of the others. Some of them you can put pressure on them and it'll actually feel the, the, uh, the resistance on it and it'll take off and put more power to it. This one feels consistent all the way through. So this time through, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on it and see if we can even stall it. So let's keep moving on. It actually, uh, it has a lot of power, but like I say, it doesn't seem like the chain speed is really fast.
we're down to one bar on the battery. Didn't go completely dead on me. Uh, I was actually had to just change the battery out in my camera. And I figured since it's kind of starting to get dark, then I'd go ahead and just end things right here. I cut 28 pieces of firewood. And I've got to say that my initial impressions with this are that this saw is very powerful. It is a little bit heavy, but it's really comfortable to hold. The grips and stuff on this thing are great. Probably, probably some of the best feeling grips I think that I've ever felt on any chainsaw, whether it be gas or battery, either one. I am quite impressed with the way that this thing feels. I really do like the 20 inch bar on this thing. Uh, if you're trying to reach in between stuff like where I was, I was working here and you know, I was trying to reach in between logs and that kind of stuff. You can reach out there and kind of get to that kind of stuff and doesn't feel like you're, you're reaching so far to get to it. There's going to be a whole bunch of use and a whole bunch of testing done on this saw. It, like I say, it's kind of been long awaited and this 20 inch saw, can it be used as a daily saw or is it still just kind of a hobby saw like you find with, you know, a lot of your other battery saws. If you've got one saw and one battery, can you actually run it from a full charge to dead without it overheating? Can you just continuously run it? Or if you have multiple batteries, can you just keep running them and switching them back and forth and the saw hold up to that kind of use? If you have any ideas or things that you particularly want to see, leave those in the comments below. I appreciate your feedback. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and follow along for future videos on this saw, plus all the videos that I've done in the past on other saws. So thanks for checking out the video today, and we'll see you on the next one.